Hello, this is Scott Manley with my actual entry into my uh, Mooner Express challenge. Now, I uh, basically forgo regular engines altogether and use Sepatrons. Now, on paper, Sepatrons are actually less powerful uh, than the mainsails, but the thing is that they include their own fuel, and if you can burn off that fuel before you fire them, then they have a ridiculous thrust-to-mass ratio. They have a thrust-to-mass ratio of something like uh, 144, whereas the mainsails have a thrust-to-mass ratio of 25. So, although you need a lot of them, you can definitely get faster acceleration. In theory, you can accelerate at something like 144 Gs. But first of all, you need to burn off that fuel. So I disable infinite fuel, and having aligned everything, fire those engines, and you see everything lift upwards, being propelled upwards at quite ridiculous amounts. And now I actually hit the space bar and fire up infinite fuel. You can see me shooting skywards. Uh, uh, well, my goodness, ludicrous speed is the only word. I mean, it plaid even. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's fantabulous. It is going skywards like a firework propelled by a rocket. And yes, we are now at some like 20 kilometers per second. Look, that's ridiculous. So I'm trying to. I switch to a moon. See your moon center view, so I can try and make sure I get the landing site right in the middle of the uh, the light side, and see uh, everything firing, looking like kind of looking like glitter being sprayed out the back of those things. But enough glitter that it is propelling itself, propelling it at quite at um well 60 kilometers per second. Also, notice in the middle there is a group of RCS engines firing. Now those I'm powering obviously using infinite RCS fuel. You know that that's uh, covered and uh, all of these things are obviously attached to the cubic octagonal strut there's eight bars and yeah you can see me there firing and stopping firing that adds a small amount of thrust but it's thrust which I can use I can disable and enable right it's thrust that I maintain control over the infinite fuel on those sepatrons is basically on or off I'm either accelerating at 100 G's or not accelerating at all and that's kind of a problem because uh, you know, if you click the thing on and off, that's still over 100 meters per second delta in your velocity. So it's quite easy to completely miss your target. Anyway, after uh, 2 minutes and 50 seconds, I'm inside the Moonar Sphere of Influence and screaming towards the surface like something that has no care or respect for its own safety or life. Yes, it is a Kerbal piloting this thing. Who would have expected anything less? 400 kilometers out, still moving at 20 kilometers per second. This uh, it is decelerating, but it's barely there. 10 kilometers per second, 100 kilometers out, and I I pause it for or I pause the thrust for but a moment, so I can uh, save it. But it turns out that I don't need to save it after all. So yeah, just clicking this on and off as little as possible, I'm trying to kill the velocity. Oh, and there I actually overdo it. I'm now going upwards, so I flip the thing over and f fire the translational controls to push me towards the ground a little faster, because every second counts. We're at four minute mark. It'll be nice to get onto the surface before the five minute mark, and 4.50, excellent. Now it's bounced off of those cub cubic octagonal struts. While it settles to the ground, my Kerbal can jump out. And he can plant that flag. There we go. Now we have to sit and watch respectfully as the flag unfurls. But and uh, of course put some poignant message for future days, future generations to respect. Blah is what he said. Let's jump on board now. 526. That took almost 30 seconds on the surface, and I'm using the RCS to lift myself up, but. Only for a moment. Now we're heading straight back up. 5 minutes 30 was when I fired the rockets. I want to get this thing back to the surface of Kerbin in, in under 10 minutes. This is my goal. And so you see me tabbing around trying to find the target. Now I want to not bother slowing down, right? I want to kind of hit the atmosphere at a grazing velocity so that it kills my... So it slows me down quickly, but not so quickly that it tears my entire spaceship apart. And herein is the hardest part. You pretty much have to navigate this thing and one of the things I've noticed is that once you start approaching things at really high speeds, 
it just kind of forgets where the where the periap should be and sometimes it won't draw it even though it's clearly there but I'm only coming in over the land and the reason is that the land is much safer for landing when you have all these struts sticking out of you you can pretty much land on those at quite high speeds and they will be okay but if you touch the water then they will be destroyed and you won't get the benefit of their super super strength now uh, we've reached over 110 kilometers per second and we're still accelerating towards the surface. We want to turn around at about 2,000 kilometers altitude and yeah, 128 kilometers per second. Nice round number, 128. Uh, maybe I'm just one of those computer geeks who thinks in binary. Wow, the awesome thing is this is not accelerated. This is like real time. <laughs> I Because the timer is yellow, I actually accelerated the video a little. Oh, losing a bit of my ship. Wonder how much is left. Well, a lot of the Sepatrons are still there. That's good to know. A lot of the struts are still there. That's even better. And okay, it looks like we lost a few struts, a few Sepatrons there. But we should actually have control, which means I, I should be able to land this thing. Just have to time the thrust at the right moment. Don't want to do it too early because we want to get to the surface. Ugh. Man, 8 minutes and 40 seconds. Will I get it down for 9 minutes? I don't think so. Looks like my entry into the atmosphere was a little too gradual. I should have perhaps been a, a little more aggressive in my descent towards the surface. I'm now just sitting here twiddling my thumbs as I plummet towards the surface at over 100 meters per second. That's 300 kilometers, 360 kilometers per hour, incidentally. Over 200 miles per hour. And when that shadow shows, I'm going to click this, click, go there. Okay, now, oh, 20 meters per second. But look, it's down with 9 minutes and 27 seconds on the clock. So I beat my 10 minute goal. <laughs> yes. There we go. It actually says 9 minutes and 24 was the first contact. And with that, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Actually, even after that uh, descent, the thing is still flyable using um, just little spurts of infinite fuel. Here we go. It uh, will fly its way through the atmosphere. I think, unfortunately, because of the way aerodynamics works, it wants to kind of follow a ballistic arc. And yeah, doesn't really want to stay straight. Also, the thing is only running... Uh, the thing is running out of power. <laughs> <laughs> so because it has no electrical power when I've not got infinite fuel on, I'm pretty much doomed myself. The only way to go is down. And so I collide with the ground again and destroy it. Yes. But the awesome thing is, those things just keep flying. <laughs> Ridiculous rates, of course. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes.